My kids have never seen me on TV. They're 10 and 7 now, so they're growing up. They're both boys. They, they like each other and they hate each other. You know what it's like when you've got brothers? They argue a lot. They argue over everything, you know? It's always about my turn. Sibling rivalry, isn't it? You know, it's my turn. It's my turn to do this, my turn to do that. Some things I understand, like, it's my turn to sit in the front. It's a big one. It's my turn to sit in the front. He sat in the front last time. It's my turn to sit in the front. I, don't know, I, don't, I, mean, I can't keep track of it. Why don't you just sit on the way and you on the way home? Nobody did it last time. It's my turn to sit in the front. The sand sitting in the front because it's more fun, isn't it? You're up there with mum or dad, you can see more clearly, you get the music, you can draw in the window. Also, you have the satisfaction of knowing that your brother, your rival, is trapped in the worst seat of the car behind you. But there are some things I will never understand. Like, it's my turn to push the button in the lift. This is not one of the perks of life. There's so much more exciting things in the world. But my kids go mental. If the other one pushes it, it's not his turn. It's like, oh, I can't even the button. It's my turn. <laughs> like, this is one of the most boring things: pushing up and watching it get illuminated. Just let your brother do it. It's very boring. And they do this arguing. They get so upset that they don't want to stop talking because they know their brother's going to chip in. So they keep talking while they're inhaling. It's a skill that only children have. <laughs> I can't believe you pushed the button when it's my turn. And then he just pushed the button. Right? <laughs> are often quite pleased if somebody pushes the button for them. We go into a lift and sometimes there's a person, a stranger, in the lift and they're like, oh, which floor, please? Sorry, which floor? Oh, thank you. Oh, you're very kind. You're a very kind stranger. Eleven. I'm going to eleven. They push eleven and like, oh, thank you. Thank you, stranger, for making my life a little easier. It's very rare for an adult to go, hey, it's my turn to push the button. Step aside. I can't believe you pushed the button when it's not really my turn to push the button. The road is exactly the same. The pelican crossing thing where you push it, it says, wait, is there anything more boring than that in life? <laughs> my kids go mental. I can't believe it was my turn. He pushed the button yesterday and the day before and I haven't pushed the button for ages. This is so boring. <laughs> often adults forget. We're often standing at the road going, have you, sorry, have you not pushed the button? I thought you pushed the button. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I'll push the button. But with kids, oh, the drama. The drama of road crossing. Because also you've got to teach them about the green man. Because you can never cross on the red man. Because, you, you know, it's dangerous. So you always have to wait there with your kids, waiting for the green man. It's the red man. Don't cross on the red man. Adults don't help, of course, because they just walk when they walk faster. <laughs> but he's going, he's an idiot. Children, that man's an idiot. <laughs> Once a man in an all green tracksuit starts walking across, <laughs> my someone's like, is that the green man? No, that is just an idiot. It's another idiot. I like it when couples who are like in a relationship, they obviously love each other, you know? They might be married, they might be going out, they're walking along the street and the man will always do that thing when he naturally goes roadside. Roadside, I'm gonna ro roadside, excuse me. I'll go this side, darling. If a car comes off the road, I'll take it, I'll take it. I'll take it, you go there. The worst that can happen is a wheelie bin might topple on you, but here, a lorry could come and I'll just go that out, with my, I'll stop it with my thigh. I, I got it. You get to a road, right? And there's this ambiguity over whether to cross. And you, suddenly the hands, you stop holding hands. One, one person will go, and they look at the car and think, oh, there's a car coming. And then one person starts going, and the other person goes, no, I think I'm going to die. And the other person keeps going, what's happened? Where are you? And you end up on opposite sides of the road. What are you doing? Well, so I, I, thought, I thought I was going to die. And you left me to die. I like it now with the countdowns. Have you seen the countdown clocks? They give you like 20 seconds across the road. So you're watching the clock, and I always do it well inside the allotted time. I'm watching the clock, I'm like, I've done it in eight seconds, I've got 12 left. I tend to go back in, I'm gonna make the most of my time. I like to time it exactly. Three, two, one, and yeah. This really is a magnificent theater. I should say hello to everybody at the top. Are you okay up there? Yeah. You're not in the best seats. Is there, can everybody see? Is there any? <laughs> That's not gone well. You liked that, didn't you? <laughs> Look how smug you're looking right now. <laughs> well, I did get here early enough, and I took my seat in the stalls. 
Because a lot of these old theatres, they have restricted view seating that they sell. I don't know, first of all, why are they seats there? Why do they do that? Who, who sees a pillar at a theatre and just think, we'll just put a seat behind there <laughs> and sell it on the cheap? Do people feel pleased with getting a bargain? We went out last night to the theatre, I saw The Lion, The Witch. I never saw The Wardrobe, but I did get a great deal of the tickets. I saw Snow White and I, I counted four dwarves, four out of seven, that's good enough for me. The weather's getting nicer. Have you noticed? It's got springy. It's got a bit springy. I've started watching the weather forecast again because I don't watch it in the winter. I don't see the point. I don't know who, who watches the weather forecast. It is so boring. It's going to be four and then six in the afternoon. And people watch this going, oh, that's exciting. We should go out in the afternoon. It's going to be six. But now I'm watching it again because it's getting quite fun. But they do tell you a lot of things you don't need to know. Like, I need to know if it's going to be windy. I need to know the speed of the wind, obviously. I don't think I need to know the direction. Why why do they tell us the direction? It's going to be a stiff north-easterly breeze. I'm not sailing to work. I really don't care. Are people leaving slightly later? Oh, with a tailwind, I'll get there in half the time. This is fantastic. People walking around with compasses. Well, they got that wrong. And I think it's about time they stop with the pressure. Nobody knows what pressure is on the weather. Nobody has any idea what it means. But they keep telling us about the pressure. Oh, there's going to be some high pressure coming in here. And later in the week, there's going to be low pressure. We just go, oh, I don't care. No one's changed their plans according to the pressure. No one's ever shown up. I'm sorry, I'm late. I got stuck in the pressure. We don't know what it means. I tell you, though, the weather's no good if you live in Scotland or Northern Ireland. Because at the end of every weather forecast, they always go, except Scotland and Northern Ireland. <laughs> so fun before Christmas, isn't it? Because you don't notice about the winter. You don't notice that it's dark and miserable because you're still focused on Christmas. And then Christmas happens. And then you're just stuck, depressed in the winter. There should be two Christmases. There should be another Christmas a few months down the line because there's no special days to keep us going through the winter. Pancake day. How pathetic. Is Pancake Day compared to Christmas? There's no build-up to Pancake Day. People aren't like there's only two more shopping weeks to Pancake Day. Got the flour and the eggs. Need a bit more milk, and then I'm done nice and early. I can relax and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Do you know today I saw a lemon wedge. <laughs> and I felt all pancakey inside. I'm so into it this year. It's Pancake Day. Pancake Day tends to be the day after Pancake Day. We're like, oh, was yesterday Pancake Day? We've done it again. It was a Tuesday. Damn. I can make you a pancake now if you like. No, it's not the same. It's not the same. And it will get colder. Of course, you know, it'll get colder. The big, what do they call it? The big chill and everything. The beasts from the east. that all start happening. Beasts from the east. Frozen windscreen day. That's a big one. It's a big one. When you sit in the car, it's like an igloo. You can't see out of it. You can't see out of the window. You can't see out, so you have to defrost it. Sometimes you could roll the window down. Can't you? you roll the window down, and then you roll it back up, and then that does the side. They come back. Oh, it's gone. That's it. That doesn't work with snow. Every time it snows, we make the same mistake. We sit in the car. We roll the window down. The snow remains compacted, staring at us as if to say, you are an idiot, and then it falls into the car. Why? Why did I do that? Why did I do that again? I did that last year. The frozen windscreen day, you sit in your igloo, you put the heating on, you put the blower on, the blower on. There's two buttons, there's one for the front, there's one for the back. You don't know which is which, so you put them both on. You put them both on, because when you drive, you need both. People don't just do the back and I'm going to reverse to work. No, get both on. <laughs> And you sit there, you're waiting, you're waiting for the car to heat up so that the defrosting will begin before you. It's quite boring, but it's a lovely moment, isn't it? When just, just in the middle, at the bottom, of a frozen solid windscreen, a tiny little opening starts to form. A tiny little half moon shape, a little aperture, and you look through it, don't you? the outside world. <laughs> and then very strangely, you find yourself driving away. <laughs> Even your own brain goes, what are you doing? Well, I know these roads.
I have lost weight. I don't know if that's coming across. <laughs> don't, don't be too happy. <laughs> this is a temporary situation. I'm <laughs> obviously going to put it all back on. This is what I do. I lose weight and then I eat, because I've already started eating again. I'm hungry. I'm just a very hungry person. <laughs> I, I spend a lot of time at the fridge. I'm finding myself there again, just there, just grazing. And, and they beep as well. Do you have, does your fridge beep? It beeps and it, it, I associate it so much with eating that when lorries reverse now, I get a bit peckish. <laughs> I'm blaming my metabolism. I don't actually know what metabolism is, but there are obviously people with a fast one, and I don't have that. <laughs> because you see people who are very thin, and they're like, I oh, have my metabolism is so fast. You know, I just eat, I eat like a pig, but you know, it just drops off me. <laughs> I don't know what a metabolism is. I think it's like some, the things inside you and then food comes in, and people with a fast metabolism are like, OK, OK, everybody, separate, separate equally. All right, you go over there, you go over there. A little bit of you go down the leg there. The rest of you, the bulk of you, straight through. Just keep going, keep moving, don't stop. Just keep moving. Don't look behind you. We're keeping busy here, guys. We're in a rush, OK? You go over there, just shape around the arm, shape around the arm. Looking good, looking good. The rest of you through, OK? <laughs> That's not me. That's not me. <laughs> My metabolism is more like, OK, OK. Everybody, everybody, come. Come here. <laughs> Just relax, OK? Just everybody relax, cos we're going to be here a very long time. <laughs> OK, let's all slowly make our way to his bum, and we'll wait there. <laughs> Maybe somebody there knows what to do. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> but I did lose a little bit of weight, and I counted my wife who suggested that I went on a diet and suggested that I went to a medical clinic in Austria to do it. When I say suggested, she bought me flights. <laughs> she literally just handed them to me and said, go away and come back better looking. So <laughs> I went to this place in Austria where you lose a stone in a week. A stone in a week. And everybody that does it loses a stone in a week. I lost a stone in a week. And it's actually am it's amazing how they do it. You know, you're sitting there thinking, how would you do it? A stone in a week? It's, uh, well, I'll tell you, it's, it's amazing. They don't give you any food. <laughs> I've never been more hungry in my entire life. I was trapped in this clinic in the middle of the Austrian Alps, paying an awful lot of money, drinking this thing in the morning called Epsom salts, which just make you go to the loo. You just eat, drink it, and then an hour later, your whole system is flushed out of the loo. So I'm on the loo all week with no food, miserable, and it cost me thousands and thousands of pounds. I could have gone to Benidorm and eaten a dodgy prawn and had the same holiday for, like, 200 quid. But no, I'm in Austria. Oh, I'm in Austria with all these middle-class, slightly fat people like me. OK, good morning, good morning, good morning. We, we can barely walk for hunger. <laughs> <laughs> and tummies. You know when you're a little bit hungry, or, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes you're lying in bed with your partner and your tummies start getting chatty, you know? Wow. <laughs> you know, bit of digestion. <laughs> and you comment on it. Oh, your tummy's very chatty, darling. And sometimes yours responds. Wow. <laughs> you know, mine's gone too now. In Austria, I cannot tell you what it was like. Just people wandering around. <laughs> I think my tummy actually spoke. I walked out of the, of the clinic one day to get some air off day five, and it went... <laughs> I think it tried to phone for a taxi in the night while I was asleep. <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night with the phone off the hook and my tummy just going, ah! <laughs> I'm going to say this. I don't think healthy people look good, all right? <laughs> Have you seen the people who work in health food shops? They're very healthy. They look terrible. <laughs> it's not like you go in there and they look all athletic and wonderful, jogging on the spot because they've got so much energy. <laughs> Skipping. Hi, how can I help you? <laughs> the lentils? Ah, oh, they're just down here. <laughs> That's not what they're like at all. They're all skeletal. Let me show you to the lentils. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need vitamins. I have supplements. Massive things. I, I can't swim. 